Catan combo is Cities and Nights. So you can see that stuff down here. Um, mixed with Pirate Islands. So we have the ships and all the sea hexes. So for this combo, you will of course need the base game, but you will also need the Cities and Nights box as well as the Seafarers box. So combining these two, you will need two gold hexes and three deserts. And then you will need five of each, the brick, rock, sheep, wood, and wheat. You'll also need 19 sea hexes, two of the doubles, extender, two of the single extenders, the edges, and then all of the base game edges. You'll also need all of your cities and settlements and roads, all of the ships, and all of the cities and knights, the walls and the knights that come with that expansion. Don't forget your extra die for cities and knights. Of course, everything down here. There is no development cards. Instead, you just use the progress cards and the extra victory points, and of course your commodities. There is no robber, but there is the pirate ship that will go around the pirate islands. There's no coins, but you will need three chits, Catan chits per player. So we have nine chits because there's going to be, oh, I'm gonna need one more. Oh no, I do have nine. Look at that. So you'll need three Catan chits per player. The kids are going to be on a team today. So it's going to be mom, dad, and then kids will be on their one team. No longest road, no largest army, only harbor master will be used in this combo. For the numbers, we grab three of every number except for twos and 12s, we have zero of those. So that's a house rule that we came up with. We do not play with twos and twelves. We just roll again if that happens to roll. For the harbors, you'll need all of the two to ones. And then the generic harbors, the three to ones, you will need three of those. The base trade is four to one. And for the initial placement, you'll place one settlement and one city. We're going to go ahead and set up the board. We'll be right back to explain the rest of the rules, including the victory points and just some additional notes before we start playing the game.
Okay, so we got the board all set up. So as you can see, we use the Pirate Islands setup. We used by the book out there, the main island we did totally random. Uh, kept the numbers quite same, except for the twos and the twelves because we don't use them. So a few notes before we start. We will be going up to 13 victory points plus your fortress capture. Couple notes along that line. So if you're playing the, the combos, you've most likely, hopefully, if you haven't, go back and play them by themselves. You've played these games by themselves before. Knights, of course, you can move them. They are allowed to move across the water. So let's say I have a knight here. I've moved him out and the pirate ship happens to be here. I can expel the pirate ship by of course deactivating my knight and then I can move the pirate ship wherever I want. Okay, so that's one of the notes. Merchants, of course this little guy here, are not allowed on the gold mines. Okay, and what was the other one? Oh yes, gold fields. <clears throat> so if, like out there, once you own your fortress and the settlement is on that gold mine, they do not produce commodities. So of course if an 11 is rolled, red cannot choose a commodity for their free resource. And I think that's it. Okay, so let's do our order of play. So dad's gonna place first and we've agreed to place settlements first. So dad will place a settlement followed by the kids. Followed by mom. Then mom will place her city and then the kids, and then dad. So don't forget, this is different because in cities and nights, you need that city. So that's of course where that comes from instead of two settlements. After that, dad will place his two roads or a ship if he happens to build on a coast, and the kids, and then mom. So that's gonna be order of operation. Let's see who wins.
that's game so the kids won right the kids yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was i was close all i had to do is um i had enough points i just had to knock yeah dad down. dad so, was close but uh, the kids they, did they win to the settlement by like three turns so. yeah so um we came across a few things while we were playing um what we did was on here with the barbarians the very first time that it got to here they ignored us so we actually went through twice just to give us some extra time to build knights uh, what else did we come across okay so when the pirate ship lands on your hex you're supposed to lose one resource plus one resource per city that you have but because you kind of need cities for cities and knights, we decided you do not lose resources for each city. You just, we lost one resource if we lost with the warships against the pirate. And the other one was because there's no development cards. That came up pretty early. There's no knights to make warships. So you, you can kind of choose your own rule, but our... Our rule was any two commodities bought a warship. So they could be two different commodities, two of the same, but we, we ended up using the commodities. Uh, just because we found that we needed more, your standard, this would buy you a development card, which would get you a knight. However, we needed these for the knights to protect us and the ships to get us out. So we found that these commodity, these resources were quite valuable. So we ended up going with the um, two commodities. But like I said, we totally, that's up to the house rules and whatever you want to do. So that's it. This, that's the combo of cities and knights with pirate islands. I don't, it was a long game. Uh, it took us, we weren't as focused as maybe we normally are. This one took us about two hours, if not more, to play. So, I don't know, it was tough. There were a lot of penalties. Not as enjoyable as Cities and Nights usually is. But, we still had fun as a family. So that's it. Keep playing and have fun. Mm -hmm.